Close your eyes. Take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Allow your attention to settle there. Now watch the breath for a while. Feel the breath for a while. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. You can make it shorter, more shallow, faster, slower, heavier, lighter. Ask yourself, what kind of breathing does the body need right now? We live with the breath every day, every day, but we don't know it that well. Most of us haven't explored what the breath can do for the body besides just keep it alive. But if you adjust the breath so it feels just right coming in, just right going out, it can give rise to a sense of well-being. It's a well-being that's really solid and lasting. This is why we meditate. One of the reasons why we meditate is we're looking for a happiness that's more lasting than the ordinary happinesses of the world. Everybody can find pleasure, and it's very easy. But the problem is a lot of the pleasures people look for are very short-term. And when they turn from pleasure, they turn into pain. We want something that doesn't turn back into pain, or at the very least provides enough long-term well-being that it's going to be worth the effort that goes into it. There's a saying in the Dhammapada that there's an abundant happiness that comes when you let go of a lesser happiness. The wise person will forsake the lesser happiness for the sake of the more abundant happiness. It's a basic principle of wisdom. We'd like to have every possible pleasure in the world, but we realize that we can't. So we have to ask ourselves, which ones are worth the effort? Which ones will last and support us for a long period of time and not have bad consequences down the line? The British translator of that passage in the Dhammapada added a footnote said, This cannot possibly be, mean the meaning of this passage because it's just too simple. We don't need a Buddha to tell us that you look for long-term happiness as opposed to short-term. Well, everybody knows that as a, as a principle, but the question is, do you live it? Because it's all too easy you know, when you're tired, thirsty, frustrated with things. You go for a quick fix, and it's learning how not to go for the quick fix that will turn into a long-term suffering. That's the essence of wisdom. That's the essence of wisdom as a practical quality. Buddhist wisdom is not abstract, it's more practical strategic. How do we find happiness at last? And how do we resist the temptation to go for a quick fix that will turn into pain so that we can find something that lasts with us, is true to us, a happiness that's not a traitor to us? That's the sign of your wisdom. So we meditate because we realize that even though we're sitting here with our eyes closed, we can't look at pretty things. We're sitting in a meditation posture that, after all, begins to get painful. Still, we're doing it because we're training the mind, because we realize that the mind, when it's trained, brings happiness, a happiness that lasts. And it's not the case that the meditation saves all its pleasure for the end. If you sit here breathing in a way that feels good, there's pleasure right there. And it's an innocent pleasure. It doesn't create any harm for anybody at all. So show some wisdom in your search for happiness. Look for something that's long-term. And then learn to train your mind so that it stays true to that intention, that you want something that's long-term, and you're willing to give up the things that will get in the way.